Alright, so first, what is Intel Python? Well, Intel Python is a special version of Python that has been developed by Intel that is optimized to run on Intel CPUs. And this optimization, along with the optimization that they have done for many popular computer vision slash machine learning slash data science tasks, Alright, so first off, the installation on macOS. So, the first step you need to do is go to the text-based version of this tutorial, which will be linked in the description, and download the tarbar, tarball, and there will be a link to take you there, and once you get to that website, you can just click choose and download. And then you can click on macOS here. And then you will need to sign into your account first. And once you have signed into your account, you can click on register and download and it might ask you to fill out this form and yeah it might ask you to fill out this form but if it does that you should just be able to just search up Intel Python again and click on this first link and then download it from here and register and it will still ask you for the form so then I just guess you have to fill it out And when you are done filling out the form, it will redirect you to this site where you can select what we have to download. So we need Intel Python distribution for macOS. So click that. And then when it's done loading, make sure it's selected on the latest version. And then hit download. And it will redirect you to a download page. And the download has started so this download is quite large so I'm gonna cut back when it's done installing okay so when the download is complete you can come over to your terminal and navigate to the directory where you have downloaded the file and then you can type tar dash xvzf the name of the tarball and for some reason the tarball isn't showing up here and that appears to be because Safari is decompressing it and if you're using Safari and you have the auto decompress setting enabled this will happen to you so in that case you don't have to run this command as um, Safari will show the extracted tar.gz file but if you aren't using Safari or don't have this setting enabled you can type tar-xvzf followed by the name of the tarball and since I am using Safari and have that setting enabled which is by the way enabled by default I will wait for that to finish extracting
All right. So when the file is done decompre decompressing, you can CD into that folder. And once you have CD into that CD into that directory, you have to run the command bash setup intel python dot sh and this is the shell script that will set up intel python on your machine so you can run that or paste that into your terminal and hit enter and this will execute that shell script which will in turn install intel python on your machine and this shell script does take quite some time to execute so I will cut back to when it is done executing and when the shell script is done running it will give you this message that will explain to you how you can install or use versions of packages that are accelerated and now just to verify that it is installed well before we can verify we have to activate this Intel Python for this specific shell so to do that we can just type ls just to make sure all the folders are there and then type in source dot slash bin slash activate and once you're done running that command you will notice that it now says base over here it says base and then the standard shell prompt and now we can verify that everything has gone correctly by first typing conda making sure this comes up properly then we can type in which python and we can see that it is indeed pointing to the intel python's python executable and that is good and just to verify or see what packages we have installed by default we can type conda list and it will list all of these packages and all of these packages come in fault by installed by default and that is all you need to do to install intel python on macOS. alright so previously i showed you the installation of intel python on linux and mac os and now for windows luckily the setup process is extremely similar however the difference is when you download Intel Python you need to download the Windows version from the drop-down and the Windows version is a zip file instead of a tarball so instead of extracting the tarball you just have to extract the zip file in File Explorer then you just have to CD into the directory just like you have to for Windows uh, for Linux and Mac OS and then after that you have to run the bat script set up intel python dot bat and that will do exactly what this setup intel python dot sh did it's just it's a bat script which is obviously designed to run on windows and once it does that to activate the environment you can type dot slash scripts bin slash activate and in case you want more information about that that is documented here in the documentation so if you just search it up here and then you can hit getting started and then windows and here it has what I just told you and sorry about that that command to activate is dot slash scripts activate but once you do that you will get that base prefix in your command prompt and then your Intel Python will be set up on Windows alright so now that we have Intel Python installed we need to add the Intel channel to the sources of Anaconda so to do that first we have to update Conda which can be done with Conda update Conda so I'm gonna type Conda update Conda and hit enter and this will update conda and it will ask you yes or no hit y 
and it is installing and it roll back the transaction because it's saying there was a problem installing which this could happen to you so in this case I would say that you should create a new environment so conda create dash dash name I'm gonna call this tutorial you can call it whatever you want and then dash dash python equal 3.7 and this dash dash python determines what version of python to use I would recommend 3.7 unless you have any special use case and then hit enter and you don't need dash dash before python so that's why it gave an error and now it'll ask you would you like to install these packages in the new environment hit yes and it will do what it has to do to get those packages installed and then now we can activate that environment so conda activate tutorial and now if you do conda update conda or it says package is not installed I can do conda install conda and it will say this and this will take a second or two to install over here and it's done installing so now I can do conda up well it just installed conda the latest version so there's no need to update but that's what I would do if you get an error but now that conda is up to the latest version we need to add that intel channel so to do that we type conda config dash dash add channels intel and now when we run this command it will say for me it says intel's already in the channels list at the top and that's because i've already added this but if you haven't added this it will just add it and now we have that taken care of and to make sure that it's installing stuff with the intel binary first we have to install the intel optimization library so to do that conda install mkl mkl dash devil and then static and include for mkl this command that you can copy from the text based version and then that can be put over here in the terminal and this will take a few seconds to run here but when it's done running it will make sure we have mkl which is intel math kernel library and intel tbb which is threading building blocks and these are what allow the magic of optimization to happen so if you don't install these then you won't get any of the performance improvements and this will take a few seconds here to install and it is now done installing and now that we have those optimization libraries installed we can try to install an intel optimized version of a package now in this case i'm going to install sklearn so now that we've added that intel channel to the top we can just type a normal install command so conda install sklearn and it will do what it needs to do it and sklearn it looks like you have to type scikit-learn so I'm just gonna come to the Intel Anaconda channel so channel and over here if I control F it for sklearn or learn just because it's scikit-learn 
it should come up, but again, as I said before, if it doesn't, you can make a Google search, Anaconda Intel SK Learn, it will be here, Anaconda Intel SK Learn, and here is the command to install that. And you can just copy this from here, it should work without the dash C Intel, but I'm just going to leave it there just to be safe. And now, when I type enter, it will tell us to install all these packages. And you'll see, it's installing the Intel version of all these packages. Dell, Dell 4 Pi, which are the backends that this sklearn uses to optimize MKL, these MKL libraries, NumPy, TBB 4 Pi, SciPy, it's installing all these from the Intel channel, which is good. So we can hit Y and enter, and it will do what it has to do to get those packages installed. And they're done installing. And now you'll see this message here. Installed package sklearn can be accelerated using Dell 4 Pi. Please set use Dell 4 Pi sklearn environment variable to yes to enable the acceleration. And they give an example. So I'm going to do this and on Mac and Linux to do this, you just type export use Dell 4 Pi sklearn equals yes. Enter now just to verify that that worked. Echo dollar sign to get the value. And then the name of this variable without the space and equal sign at the end and it says yes which means that sklearn will be accelerated and if you're on windows you can just use the set command to do the same thing but now that we have that set we can test that sklearn was installed successfully so if i just open up a python shell here and then i type in import sklearn it will import without an, any error, which is good. And that's all you have to do to set up any pre-built package that's available for Intel Python from the Intel Anaconda channel. Now, what about packages that don't have pre-built versions in that Anaconda channel? And one very common example of this is OpenCV. And unfortunately, since there is no pre-built version, in order to get these optimizations, you'll have to build OpenCV from source. And when you're building from source, you'll have to set these following flags. In the case of OpenCV, it's with MKL, with U MKL use multi-thread, MKL with TBB, and then with TBB. And this is for OpenCV. For any other package, this information will most likely be in the documentation. And you can find which flags you got to set to build that with the Intel Python MKL support. Now it's time for some performance comparisons with Intel Python versus normal Python. And these performance comparisons were conducted on a late 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro with an Intel Core i7-2640M processor, which is a 2.8 GHz dual-core processor, 16 GB of RAM, Samsung 860 EVO SSD, and macOS Mojave version 10.14.6. And during the tests, nothing else was running in the background, and I ran the test from the terminal to ensure that there was no IDE overhead. And the scripts that I use for benchmarking can be found here, which is github.com slash geekjunior slash Intel Python benchmarks. The link will also be in the description down below. But for the actual test themselves, with sklearn, we see approximately a 43% improvement to performance when using nor Intel Python versus normal Python. And again, the scripts that I use for benchmarking will be in the description, but in this case, I used a sample k-means classifier from the official sklearn website, and I calculated the time from Python run command to when the window showed up f with the visualization. And 43% is quite a substantial amount. It might look like very little here, 7 seconds to 4 seconds, but that is really a lot in percentage gain, especially when you'll be working with bigger data sets and larger applications. Now, if we look at PyTorch, PyTorch saw a, le a less gain, but still a respectable 17%, which was on the sample SciFar image classification from their website, again, all in the repository that's linked in the description. 
and 17% again that's still not as much as sklearn but quite a substantial amount and the best oh the package that saw the best improvement is tensorflow with a whopping 75% decrease in training times when using intel python this is something that i didn't expect at all i was blown away when i saw this when i when this first happened i thought it was a mistake so i ran the test multiple times and this these are the results that i still got so if you're using TensorFlow, Intel Python can really save you some time. And this was on the sample image classification IPython notebook that I converted to a Python file from the TensorFlow website. All right, now for the Pandas benchmark. And Pandas sees a staggering 66% reduction in speeds when using Intel Python versus normal Python. And this was for a script that I wrote that would load a 3.2 gigabyte CSV file that I downloaded from Kaggle using the read CSV function and the, it was completed substantially faster on Intel Python and this is a huge difference and if you are working with big data 3 gigabytes is very small big data is often way larger than that so and these were the benchmarks, and as you can see, there are, or there are huge performance improvements when you, by using Intel Python compared to normal Python. But that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and enable notifications for, so you don't miss any future programming content. And I'll see you in the next video.